What's going on, Lo Gang? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another absolutely slapping vid. Today, we got a good one. This is the one modification that I have been, I think, most excited for. The only thing that maybe compares was when I put coilovers on Dory, the E36. If you've ever put coilovers on a car, you know how excited you are to drop it down for the first time, take it out for a ride. But this modification that we're doing today, oh doggy. This is gonna be, I think, the new centerpiece for the car. I mean, I think it's gonna be a new defining characteristic for Dory. Without further ado, here it is, the mo- Oh my God, sorry Dory. Oh geez. Okay. Bumper is solid, apparently. Without further ado, here it is. The mod to end all mods. My Cooler Works chassis minor chip. Okay, so here it is, the Cooler Works BMW Pro Shifter. The only difference between the regular one and the Pro one is the self-centering spring. It's also uh, pretty significantly longer than the regular version and a little bit more expensive. I got this directly from Cooler Works, so it shipped from Lithuania. Took a little bit to get here, but you know, I was expecting it, it was all good. There are a fair few self-centering shifters like this on the market. I just personally think this one looks the best. You can see here, if I take the little protective sleeve off, you can see that now we're gonna have a reverse lockout, so when I pull that, it pulls the reverse lockout pin. That is pretty cool. That means I will not, hopefully, go into reverse on the freeway. It's absolutely beautifully made. There's a lot of bearings in all of the uh, rotational surfaces. You'll see in a bit, but the self-centering spring is really strong. My hope is that this makes the car just that much more fun and that much more tactile to drive on a daily basis. Dory is not a track car. She's never gonna be a track car. I don't like driving fast. But adding some kind of tactility to the shifts, which I'll show you later, hopefully, if we get it set up correctly that I'm just I'm really excited for to to like drive to the grocery store and like you know chunk 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 you know what I mean okay the rest of the stuff here is just kind of supporting mods for the shifter in last week's video I talked about solid motor and transmission mounts that's the only thing that you won't see in this video that's just important because with a chassis mount shifter we're removing the entire shift linkage and since this is self-centering that means it's gonna self-center it's gonna do its thing and if your transmission is flopped over to the side because your motor and transmission mounts are soft that's you know you're gonna have a bad time you're gonna miss a shift. I don't want to do that. So I do have ADA transmission and motor mounts in the car from Garagistic. Speaking of Garagistic, I have Garagistic's uh, dual shear selector rod or DSSR for you BMW folks. This replaces the stock selector rod. You can see I labeled it here. This side goes to the transmission. This side goes to the shifter. They are hypothetically the same on each side. This side just has a tiny bit of extra room for the actual selector joint. So I labeled them this way. Last point on this is you can see it has a little bit of a bend in it. That's to avoid the flex plate or guibo. Jui guibo. Juibo. That's to avoid the flex plate in 328s and M3s, because with the ZF transmission, it's a little bit different. For 325s, I think you can just have a straight selector rod and it'll be fine. Okay, I mentioned this selector joint earlier. This is a replacement one for the OEM one. I'm not sure if I'm going to install this today. There's enough stuff underneath the car that's going to be a complete pain in the ass. It might have a little bit of extra slop because the one in there is pretty old, but it's just one headache I don't really want to deal with today. I don't know, we'll see once we get under there. Second to last, we have the direct fit kit for the E36 from Cooler Works. So they make this kit so you don't have to drill anything in your transmission tunnel. It just uses these three bolts for existing holes. You bolt it down, you plop the shifter on top. Wait, how does it go? You plop the shifter in like that. My hope is that it will be a uh, clean and drill-free installation. Okay, I say we get cracking with this installation, why don't we? Before I get Dory up on jack stands, I'm gonna go into the interior and remove everything that we need to because I wanna spend the least amount of time on jack stands as humanly possible. Jack stands scare me. I don't like being underneath the car, so this is gonna be a really stressful installation. But I figure we get everything we can done before we throw her up on jack stands, just for that little extra bit of safety. Alrighty, let's do it.
right, Lo Gang, we're back. We got a new lens. Thank you, two day shipping. The old one, um, Something's rattling, but it's all good. Amazon came through, we're back in biz. Okay, so it's been a couple days and the shifter's working great. I wanna talk a little bit more about the installation, also whether or not it's worth it, and then also talk about the shift pattern, because the shift pattern has changed. But before we do any of that, you've been waiting long enough for the cinematic reveal. Let's quit dilly-dallying, hope you enjoy. Okay, now that you've seen it in all its beauty, I gotta show you how this thing sounds. Okay, so it's in gear right now. I'm gonna bring it back to neutral. Just listen. Do you hear that? Okay, now check out reverse. This thing is mad. I'm not entirely sure how that's gonna come across on camera, but in person, it is such a tactile, uh, direct feeling. I wish I could share it through the internet. Like, it's so cool. It's so fun. Now, when I was demonstrating those shifts, you might have seen the kind of odd shift pattern. And it's something to keep in mind if you're getting a self-centering shifter for an E36, or for any BMW, for that matter. Inside the gearbox, there are return springs and detents depending on the gear. This has an external centering spring. So if you have any detent pin issues, like a fifth gear lean, for example, which, by the way, I have, and I didn't fix the right way, I just bought the shifter. But either way, Way, whether or not you have the detent pin issues that are pretty common with this ZF transmission, this just makes the entire shifter assembly return to center with utter aggression. Watch this. The stock shifter could not do that. This centering spring is stiff enough that I don't even check that I'm in neutral by rocking it back and forth anymore. It's just pretty clear when I'm in neutral, it's that difficult to rock back and forth. It's awesome. But anyway, the shift pattern is slightly different because in first and second gear, you may have noticed that this centers itself. So if I wanna go to first, I do everything normal. I go over and forward, which normally I would just stay there in first, but if I let it go, it stays in first gear, but now the shifter is centered. So if you want to go to second, you got to push it over, pull it all the way back into second like you would in a normal car. But again, if you release it, it snaps back to center. Now this is a little bit weird. It takes like maybe 10 minutes to get used to. But the benefit of this, the cool part, that's really fun for daily driving, is that when you go from second to third, which is, you know, one of the most common shifts in daily driving, all you have to do is push it straight forward and you may have been able to hear it chunked its way through neutral, centered itself automatically, and went straight into third. So your second to third shift is almost like a reverse sequential, kinda. You don't need to pull that shift lever over in order to put it into third. It's just a straight shot. It's very fast and very efficient. And it's honestly, it's just fun. Fourth gear and fifth gear are like roughly the same as they normally would be. So to go to fourth, you pull it back through neutral all the way to fourth, then fifth, you go up, over and you can see it kind of centers itself a little bit but not quite all the way back to center here you still have that benefit where if you want to downshift from fifth to fourth this centering spring is going to help you immediately get back into fourth gear you don't need to search around there's no vagueness nothing like that so if i'm in fifth gear i want to go to fourth just pull it straight back now the big question here is was this worth it because this is not cheap this is like one of the more expensive modifications i've done to dory and that's including suspension and things like that in case you're wondering I know someone's gonna ask. The shifter assembly itself is about 500 USD, and this direct fit kit, which helps me mount the whole thing, that was about $100 USD. And you don't technically need the direct fit kit, so if you wanted to go this route and you didn't wanna spend the extra 100 bucks, you can just drill straight into your transmission tunnel. I will say that the direct fit kit did exactly what it was supposed to do. I didn't have to do any drilling. I didn't have to pull apart the center console. As I'm sure you can imagine, if you gotta drill a bunch of holes in your transmission tunnel, Tunnel, you have to kind of take this thing off and then put it all back together. That's kind of a pain in the rump. So this thing definitely made the installation easier. If you have a track car with no interior though, just drill straight into your transmission tunnel. There's no reason to get it. But overall, my answer to the question, is this thing worth the money? I would say 100% yes. This has completely transformed the car, even in a daily driver. I mean, it is so tactile, it is so fun every time you get in the car. And I'm always a fan of car modifications that help you enjoy the car without breaking the law. You know what I mean? Like breaking the law, you know, 
It happens. Sometimes we get carried away. We drive quickly. But those little touches in a car that make it that much more fun, even when you're just cruising around town, that, to me, is how I'm using the car like 95% of the time. And so those times better be fun. Something else to mention is that if you're a BMW fan and you're not sure if you're gonna keep the car that you're installing this in forever, this shifter does work in a lot of different chassis. And you can buy the direct fit kit for like E90s, E92s, E46s. Like BMW hasn't changed their shifter assembly enough so that the shifter needs to be that much different. So you could hypothetically carry this shifter with you to future chassis that you purchase. If you can budget the money to buy this shifter, the first time you shift from first gear to second gear, it's 100% worth it. You will not be disappointed. I guarantee you. You will forget about all the money you spent on it. It is a miraculous experience. Okay, the final thing I want to say before we end this video is that installing this thing is not necessarily hard, it's just annoying. If you have a jack and jack stands and you can safely elevate the car. The actual tools involved in this installation are not complicated at all. And if you're keeping your stock selector rod, once you get the actual shift linkage off and you keep that selector rod attached, it's just one pin that you literally press in with your finger. And then you just gotta basically bolt this thing into place. The biggest problem with this installation is the notorious, uh, well, what we used to call bitch clip, but it's 2022. We don't use those types of words anymore. So from here on out, I'll call it the pain in the rump clip. The pain in the rump clip lives up to its name. It's a pain in the rump. If you're like me and you still have insulation within your transmission tunnel, it's an even bigger pain in the rump. Here's what I would recommend. Take a flathead, jam it into the corner that you can see. By the way, this is not gonna make any sense unless you have an E36. But if you do have an E36, I hope I can save you some time. Jam it in between the transmission and the opposite side of the pain in the rump clip and lightly hammer on it, basically. As you saw in the slideshow earlier, my dad literally built me a custom tool because that's just the type of dude he is. He's great. And that definitely helped to get on top of the transmission, but I would say don't even bother with that. Just go from the bottom, hammer it in, wedge it in there, twist it, fight for your life, do everything Everything you can. It's gonna suck, it might take an hour, but once you get it done, it's the best feeling. But anyway, if you're worried about the installation, don't be. People less smart than you have done it, so you can do it too, I'm sure. Okay, let's do the outro, but I gotta get out of the car first. All right, that's it for today's video. If you like the video, make sure to like the video. If you really like the video, make sure to subscribe and make a new video every single week. Thank you so much for spending your time watching this video, and I will see you next time. Peace.